Happy video day guys, Christina Brooke here. Today we're gonna be doing a chatty video. While I try this reverse makeup trend, I've been wanting to do this for so long. You put on like your bronzer and blush and everything and then after you do that, you put on your foundation. I've always thought it was interesting, have never tried it so it could be a complete disaster, but I've been wanting to try it. But today we're also gonna do a chatty video. I did start a series that I have been talking about certain topics on the channel and I haven't done one in a minute. I wanna start including more of these onto the channel. They're super fun for me to film and I really love coming up with ideas. So today I wanna talk about a subject that has been on my mind so much lately. So you guys know on this channel I love makeup, but I also really love fashion. So I've been trying to incorporate a little bit more of my fashion world onto this channel to kind of show you guys makeup and fashion because I personally am somebody who loves both worlds and I feel like finding the perfect balance between both really makes like perfection. Like I love both worlds. But as I have been incorporating more fashion into the channel, I have noticed that in my opinion, it almost seems like the makeup industry is really trying to copy the fashion industry. And I don't know if that works. So what exactly do I mean by that? Cause I know they're different things. Makeup's for the face, fashion is for your body. They're different, right? I know. But have you noticed a huge shift in the makeup industry? I have, and this has been for the past few years. This isn't something that happened like last year or nothing, but it's been happening progressively. I've seen a shift in the makeup industry and it is almost like they are trying to mimic what the fashion industry does. But can they really? That's gonna be the subject of today's conversation because there's a few things about makeup that is so different from fashion. So if we really sit down and think about it, we as the consumers are telling them, hey, yeah, it's totally cool what you guys are doing and you guys are totally acting like the fashion industry and we're okay with that. But should we be? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let me go ahead and pull my hair back really quickly. And we're also gonna start with the Anastasia Cream Bronzer in Golden Tange. It is definitely very warm for me and it's gonna look ridiculous without foundation on because my body is a lot deeper, but we're gonna just, you know, we're gonna do this and this is probably gonna look crazy. But anyways, so bear with me. I'm probably gonna look somewhat psycho in this video because of the way we're gonna do this reverse makeup. So anyways, so I have been doing research just re recently for my brand new video that's gonna be coming where I am gonna be showing you guys what's going to be in and for the fall in clothing and fashion, right? So as I was doing my little research, I started to realize some overlapping interesting things that I feel like the makeup industry is also doing that's very similar to what the fashion industry is. You know, there's big differences between the two, okay? And there's obviously one that's extremely big. But the first thing that I wanted to point out is if you notice, the makeup industry has started to get into palettes. Palettes have been very, very strong for the makeup industry since Anastasia Beverly Hills released um, one of their first palettes. And I think that Urban Decay's Naked Palettes were one of the first ones too. Once those palettes started going into the market, the beauty industry realized that selling palettes was a huge win for them. It was like a nice money maker, right? So they realized that the consumer loved palettes. Palettes are fun, I love palettes too. I think that they're just awesome. They're curated for you, they have the colors of the season, you know, it's very, very fun. So in the beginning, we would see palettes once a year, we would see them coming out, and now it has kind of turned into that palettes are being released by season, kind of like kind of like the fashion industry releases their current collections by season. We're starting to see bigger brands falling into this, kind of like, okay, we're gonna see the summer launch, and usually there's a palette. Then there's like the spring launch, usually there's a palette. Then there's the fall launch, usually there's a palette. And then there's, you know, also holiday launch. Then there might be two palettes, you know, and we're starting to see that they are jumping on this bandwagon of, hey, we can release a palette as our new collection per season, kind of like fashion releases their new clothing lines and people will buy these items every season. And by introducing it as the new season launch, people want it even more. Like, is not dying to see what is going to be the Pat McGrath holiday palette? Who is not dying to see what Natasha Denona is releasing for holiday? 
even though we're kind of know probably what it is. You know, guys, you guys know what I mean. Like there's a lot of stuff coming out that we are all kind of very interested in finding out about because they have started to launch things as seasonal collections, very similar to how fashion does. So if you think about it, there was finally something introduced to the makeup world that can allow them to capture the moods, the vibe, and the current situations that are going on and create collections. It's actually great for the makeup industry if you really think about it because it gave them more standing. It gave them more reason for people to actually want to pick up more and more and more and more makeup. Right? So some of you guys might not know this because some of you guys probably are not as into fashion as me and maybe some of you guys are more into fashion than me. But usually with fashion shows, you know, these designers are always like a year ahead of us. Like right now that we're like, hey, we're thinking of fall. They are already designing for like next year's fall. They already have their spring collections done. Their spring collections are gonna be shown now in our fall. And they're already working on like next fall. like they're way ahead of the game, right? So the makeup industry, if they follow the trends from the fashion industry, are already working on next year's fall palettes. Like they're, they're done with spring. Spring is probably done for them. So the makeup industry already knows what's gonna be in for next spring. They also probably at this point already know colors for fall of 2022. So it, they are really ahead of the game here. I don't know if you're supposed to do concealer. <laughs> before the foundation, but I just felt like doing it because I literally got distracted. <laughs> but anyways, so they are way ahead of the game. So right now, the makeup industry as well as the fashion industry are already working on what's gonna be in for fall of 2022, which is completely insane, right? Because we're like, hey, we don't even know what's gonna be in for fall of 2021. Really think about it though here. Could the makeup industry really ever really be like the fashion industry? Now this has been happening for a few years now, right? So this has not been as long as the fashion industry. I mean, the fashion industry has been doing this for many, many, many years since Chanel, the first, one of the first fashion houses of Chanel was created. Like you're talking about many, many, many years that these fashion houses have been doing this, launching a lot of seasonal brands. Maybe they added a few little seasons here and there, you know, maybe summer was never really a whole thing, but this has been happening for a while with the fashion industry. So the truth is, can the makeup industry ever really be like the fashion industry? I know right now they're jumping on a hype, they're using it to their advantage, and they're really, really packing as much as they can. They've slowed down a little bit because of the current situation that's happening, but I'm already seeing it starting up again, you know? So like, it's not like they're like, oh yes, let's slow down. No, 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 they are continuing. Sorry, I love these Amazon sponges because they're so much cheaper than beauty blenders. I will list them down below, but you can't use them dry because they're just too stiff. But once they get wet, they're just delicious, you know? So let's jump into some LYS, my favorite, 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 favorite foundation in the world. Let's put this on top, because this is how reverse makeup is supposed to work, right? Reverse foundation, is that what it's called? I don't even know. So anyways, so can the makeup industry ever really be like the fashion industry? And that is the question that I'm asking you guys today, because my response to this is, I don't think that they can, I really don't. And I'm gonna tell you guys my reasoning why I do not think that they can and why I think that this is gonna be a fad that may end up having to slow down. I think it will. So here's the main reason. Makeup expires, okay? Makeup expires. That is like the main thing and you know, when the makeup industry has been doing this, that they're releasing so many palettes back to back to back to back, they're really not giving the consumer any time to use up these palettes before it's really time for them to get thrown away, right? So if you think about the fashion industry and you just think, I'll say things that were in the 2000s, for example, and some dresses that I owned in the 2000s that some of the stuff I actually did keep because I actually really liked them. And some of them were designer items and I don't dump designer items. I always keep them and sometimes I will actually store them away and then I wait because I know things come back into fashion. Fashion recycles itself. See, the thing with fashion is it has an expiration date but it recycles itself and the product doesn't expire. Yes, of course, there's bad quality items and things can go bad, but for the most part, fashion doesn't expire. 
Fashion doesn't expire. It goes out of style, but it never really expires. It recycles itself. And that cannot be said for makeup because even though makeup recycles itself, it expires, meaning that you have to throw it away. There is absolutely no way to keep a Pat McGrath palette for 10 years and then say, oh, I'm gonna take this out again and use it because you may end up having to go to the eye doctor for maybe some fungus growing in your eye. But like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, you cannot really keep makeup for long enough to justify buying every single seasonal launch in a real world. And of course, as a YouTuber, things for me might be a little different because sometimes when I buy these launches, it's more to show the public so that they can see it because the public themselves may not have that many Natasha Denonas and they want that one that I picked up. It's not like I'm picking up all of these products and thinking that I'm going to keep them forever. I do get paid and it is kind of like a job, right? So it's a little different for me than it would be for somebody who just buys makeup for their own personal use, right? But the makeup industry has kind of like started to make people believe that makeup is the same as fashion when it really is not. You can buy yourself right now a Zimmerman designer dress. Probably in a few years, it'll be a little out of style. But if you keep that Zimmerman dress, there is a huge chance that in four years, you might pull it out and it's going to be super in style again. Or you can even sell that Zimmerman dress and maybe even make as much as you paid for it or even more if people can't find that dress because clothing doesn't lose that much value. Well, at least fas high fashion designer clothing doesn't lose that much value. Obviously, if you buy stuff from, you know, fast, if you buy stuff from faster fashion places, you could probably still resell it, but you can't charge as much as let's say you had a Zimmerman dress, you know what I mean? But what I'm trying to get at is the makeup industry has kind of made us think, hey, we're just like fashion. We're gonna release fall collection, spring collection, summer collection, uh, holiday collection. You're gonna buy a palette every single season. No problem. Here's the, but here's the thing, you buy all of these and none of these are gonna turn vintage for you. You're never gonna be able to say that I could keep my Pat McGrath palette for many, many years and use it and be able to resell it because eventually it is going to expire. It's gonna get moldy. It's not going to be able to be used. Yes, there can be, maybe, I don't know 100%, but there may be a time that people might wanna just buy these palettes, but I just don't know how makeup holds up. Like if it's all moldy on the inside, I don't see anybody being like, I want that moldy Pat McGrath palette to just put on my desk. But when it comes to fashion, oh yes, you better believe there's people looking right now for 1960s Chanel pieces that they are willing to pay a lot of money for because that clothing doesn't, because that clothing could actually be altered, tailored, reworn, and fixed a little bit, and it's ready to go, and it's literally perfection. And that's the thing that I was really thinking about a lot lately because, you know, when we invest our money in all of these makeup brands, and like I've said, I love my makeup brands, and let me tell you, this actually worked out pretty good. This looks, this, this looks kind of nice. I don't know. I think it looks nice. And the cool thing is, is that because I put the foundation on last, I don't have as many forehead wrinkles because I wasn't doing this that much. So that's pretty, so since we're talking about like random releases, let's use Pat McGrath's holiday collection from last year. So, you know, this all came to my mind because the other day I pulled out a dress that I designed when I was 14 years old to wear from my 15s and I kept it and I still have it and it's in such good shape, like literally the dress is perfect that I was even thinking, my goodness, you know, I can't wait. I'm gonna keep this until Lexi is older and maybe one day she'll wanna wear it. Maybe not for her quinces, maybe not for any of those things, but man, she might wanna wear this. And also I wore Marquesa for my wedding. So I have a beautiful Marquesa dress. It doesn't have to be worn as a wedding dress. It could be worn as a gala dress. It could be worn as so many occasions and even altered or modified it could be even cooler looking. So I was looking at these pieces and just saying, you know, like these were expensive pieces. These were pretty pricey, but look how many years I've had them. I've had my 15s one for like 
over 20 years and it's still in good shape. And then the Marquesa dress has been almost six years and, and the thing is beautiful. So I was thinking about that and going, wow, you know, like this is stuff that you really have for generations. I could save this, I can give it to my daughter. And it just it doesn't go bad, you know? It might go a little out of style for a while, but it never will go bad. And then I started cleaning out my makeup drawer. <laughs> and I was kind of like, how long have I had this ColourPop palette? Mm, four years, I don't know if I wanna put that on my eyes anymore. How long was it that, how long ago was it that the Riviera palette released? Has it been three years? Ooh, how much longer can I keep this? And then after I started doing that a lot, I started saying, wow, you know, at a certain time, I'm gonna end up having to dump a lot of makeup when I started buying more consistent, more consistently. I might have a year that I might need to get rid of like 10 or 11 palettes because they're all gonna go bad in like the same year because of the year I bought them all. And then as I started thinking, I was like, this is gonna continue to happen to me because if I keep on buying at the rate that I have and with the amount of consistency that I have with all of the new launches and all of the new releases, they're all gonna be going bad almost at the same time and I'm gonna to have to keep on replacing these things. It kinda of got me to a little bit of a point that I started to say, you know, I wanna quickly film a video about this because the truth is, is that the hype behind these product releases, the hype behind makeup launching, the hype behind all of that really kind of like makes you forget about the realistic part of makeup, which is that it does expire and it does have to be thrown away. So, you know, as much as it's beautiful and there's so many amazing launches, we are going to have to maybe put our foot down a little bit and be like, okay, wait, hold on. I just bought your fur. I just bought your palette like two months ago and I am never going to use this whole thing within three years. And now I'm going to buy another one and then I'm going to buy another one. And you know, at a certain time when palettes used to release and it was like one a year, okay, maybe you have one palette for a whole year, two palettes for a whole year, and you can start hitting pan on some of them, right? But now with so many makeup brands coming up with palettes and launching per season, so many palettes, it's almost like you're buying, it's almost like if you really wanted to, you'd be buying from one brand at least four to five to maybe even eight palettes a year, okay? If you include their minis. How would you ever be able to hit pan on any of these palettes or use them up within the, I think palettes are supposed to be dumped yearly to two years. I usually keep mine longer, but it's not like you're supposed to. Most of them have, like for example, the Pat McGrath, this is a 12 month lifespan. So I bought this in December of 2020. I have not used it even that much. And technically I'm supposed to dump it this year. I'm not gonna dump it this year because I feel like I can use it longer. And look how much shadow, like look at this. And I and since this palette, I have bought in two smaller palettes from Pat McGrath and the Hutopian palette that's coming right now. So three more palettes from Pat McGrath since this one has launched. And she has launched more than that. I just, I don't buy them all. So guys, you know, as you think about it, it's kind of like you kind of end up sitting back and going, they're kind of, they're kind of like, I don't wanna say, like, I don't know how to describe this. How do I say this without sounding rude? It's almost like, guys, that at a certain point, we are going to have to say something and be like, wait a minute. Just slow down for just a few minutes because this is getting excessive. And I know a lot of you guys were already starting to feel it being excessive because if you started getting into the hype of, you know, buying palettes, let's say 2016, 2017-ish, you guys know that by now it's kind of like, oh my goodness, I have so many. And also you start feeling like I'm not getting through them. I need a little bit more time. And maybe that's why people have started to unsubscribe to um, channels that only do review. When I do see reviews of new stuff coming out, it gets me excited as well. <laughs> but I can start to see it now. But here's the thing, guys, is that as long as we continue to buy from these brands, and as long as we continue to say it's okay for them to continue to release so many launches back to back to back to back, they are going to continue to do it because it doesn't hurt them 
to continue to release these kind of launches. It doesn't hurt their pocket. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt the brand. So like guys, honestly, here's the thing is that yes, the truth is the makeup industry is definitely trying their hardest to be like the fashion industry. They saw an opening with releasing of palettes. They took it and they ran with it. And they said, this is finally something that we can release the same as clothing companies release their latest collections. And we could literally make a multi-billion dollar industry out of just releasing eyeshadow palettes and you know little secondary collections with the eyeshadow palettes but you know the primary thing here guys is the eyeshadow palettes that is really what they make their their big money on like it's the eyeshadow releases like that is where they're <laughs> I mean, come on so somebody could be thinking right now but if you have to replace makeup, isn't it smart for them to be constantly releasing new makeup? So like every year you dump the palette that you got the year before, like I would dump this one in two years and I buy a new one. Sure, but with the amount of releases that come out in a year, even from one brand, typically people pick up like five, six. I mean, I've seen some of you guys tell me that you're almost picking up as many palettes as me, that I do this as a job to show you guys and I get paid. And some of you guys pick up as many as me, which is understandable because I, <laughs> trust me, I know the want to pick up these things because they really are. They're beautiful and they're so tempting. So I get it. I get why you guys are getting them. I totally get it. And you know, I, can't say that I wouldn't have gotten them too if I didn't do this for YouTube. I will tell you that that is also one of the reasons that I wanted to start to incorporate fashion onto the channel as well is because for me personally, as a consumer, when I buy fashion items, even if they're not super high luxury fashion items, even if they're more mainstream fashion items, I personally know that I will be keeping these pieces for so long. How does that look? Okay, hold on. Let me do some eyeliner and mascara. Let me jump right back on because those are going to be hard to talk into. So. so I put on some Charlotte Tilbury eyeliner and my L'Oreal Lash Paradise. And to be honest, I completely forgot that Refer had sent me over these amazing brushes. So I do have to do a few little details and I'm going to use their brushes. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this color right here and just add it to the inner corners. This pencil brush, guys, is super good. Look at this bronzer brush that they sent me. Holy cannolis. This reminds me of the Tom Ford one that I always wanted. I wonder if it'll work like that. I'm gonna use it to powder my face because I need to add some powder. Just jump in in here. At the end of the day, guys, we are really the people who tell the makeup industry whether they continue to do this type of stuff or they stop. And the truth is I really enjoy the new palette releases just like you guys do but at a certain point yes of course all of us are going to kind of feel like holy cannolis do i have enough makeup so like my personal opinion is that no the makeup industry cannot be like the fashion industry i feel like they are jumping on the bandwagon of doing things just like the fashion industry because it is working for them because we are buying the products we are allowing them to do this like it's just we're allowing them to which as long as we continue to get excited about these things and as long as we continue to buy them of course they're going to continue doing it because it would make no sense for them to stop i know a lot of you guys have actually told me that you are getting a little tired of the constant releases you guys actually at one point before this whole craziness happened in the world you guys were really tired of all the releases now things have slowed down but the start, the kick up again started and a lot of people already noticed it and we're already starting to get a little bit overwhelmed. Now I wonder if it'll slow down a little bit, but I do feel like I was already starting to feel people's hesitation, not wanting to buy things, getting a little bit, getting a little bit, getting a little bit annoyed that there was so many launches. And I will tell you guys, I saw a huge uptick in my Make Up Your Mind videos because I started to notice that people were starting to get interested in people convincing them not to buy certain things, which, yeah, that happens to me too. I kind of want to see people tell me not to buy something because I already know I want to buy it. I just want to know why I shouldn't. So let's do my lips. I'm going to just use Natasha Denona. Everything I'm using, guys, I'm going to link it down below because, you know, I am not good at talking and doing stuff. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and use some Pat McGrath highlight and we're almost done with this makeup look. I'm gonna use the rougher brush. Like, I'm, I think I really like these brushes, 
But anyways, so guys, that is basically the story for today. That is what I was thinking about. And I wanna know from you guys, what do you guys think? Do you think that this whole phenomenon of palettes releasing every single season and this like trend of trying to be like the fashion industry and creating like these collections that come out per season and being an actual palette per season. And, and like even brands sometimes now are like even being more than the fashion industry. They're like literally saying holiday palettes. Like what can we come out for Valentine's? Let's do a Valentine's palette, a spring palette. Then, you know, pretty soon we're gonna get Easter palette and St. Patrick's palette. Wait, doesn't ColourPop do this? But like, you know what I mean? Like there is just so many eyeshadow palettes being launched at us and so many seasonal releases that it almost gets to a certain point that we wonder like, how long can this keep up? So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you think that the makeup industry can continue at this pace? Do you think that they will eventually establish that for the next 30 years, they're gonna be able to do this as seasonal launches of palettes, of palettes, of palettes, and the consumer's never gonna get tired? Do you think that'll happen? Or do you think at a certain point, they're gonna have to scale back because the sales won't be there no more because people will literally be like, hold on, it's just too much already. I wanna know, leave me those comments down below. And also if you guys have another topic that you guys want me to talk about, leave those topic ideas down below. I wanna start incorporating some of these type of chatty videos with you guys that we can just talk about our feelings. We can all communicate down below. You guys can leave your comments down below. Your friends will comment with you. There's other people just like you in the comment section that might be having the same problems as you and they will love to answer your questions as well as me. So thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and hit subscribe. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.